I am Steven Wimberly and this is Working with Wimberly and I just wanted to talk to you guys quickly about your LT1 motor that stalls out on you. I recently got this 95 Cadillac Fleetwood with the LT1 motor in it. Now, everything with the motor has been pretty good until recently. It starts fine, it runs great, but after the car got warm, if I would come to a stoplight or the parking lot of my destination, once I stopped the car and it came to idle, it would die. It would just completely die out. It would start back up fine, but it would end up dying out again at idle. And the reason I bring this up, I'm gonna tell you what I did to fix it, but this is more of a cautionary tale about the forums, going into the LT1 forums online. And I just wanna urge you guys to be careful and check the simple stuff first. Check the simple stuff first before you spend all of this money and buy all of these parts. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to fix the stalling problem, it actually was pretty simple. Once you go into forums and you say, my LT1 motor is stalling, one of the first things that you will see is it's the OptiSpark, the plugs, or the wires. Now, I urge you to be cautious when falling down the OptiSpark black hole online. You'll read and read and read all these horror stories about the OptiSpark being bad. You got a new one, you put it in, it died immediately. They're junk, they don't make them like they used to. That's the number one thing is OptiSpark. Anytime there's an issue with this motor, they jump right to the OptiSpark. The OptiSpark is right back here behind the water pump and it can be a pain to get to and, and replace. So you don't wanna replace the OptiSpark if that's not the real issue. The second thing they'll say, it's the EGR valve. Now, on the big body cars, the Fleetwood, the Caprice, the Roadmaster, it's actually not hard to get to. Um, I've removed home plate to make this easier to see. It's sitting right there. You can see the EGR valve right here. It's held on with two nuts. Um, it's really not that hard to get to on these cars. There's much more room around these than if it were in a Corvette or a Camaro or something like that. So a lot of times they'll say it's the EGR valve. The next thing that I see a lot is the IAC valve, the idle air control, which is here. And that could potentially be the problem. Depending on where you get it, this part can be kind of expensive. And finally, you may see someone say it's the fuel pump or the fuel filter and They'll even go a step further. You need to test the pressure of the fuel or back to the, the OptiSpark and the plugs and wires and say, well, you need to check the spark and check the voltage and this, that. Before you jump down that hole and you start spending all of your money buying all of these parts, please check your vacuum lines. So the problem with my LT1 that caused it to stall out it wasn't the Opti, not the EGR valve, not the IEC, not the fuel pump, none of those things. What I had was a bad vacuum hose. I have a clamp here, then a vacuum line goes right here to the throttle body, and there's another hose clamp. This is what was causing my LT1 to stall out. That's it. This piece of hose cost about a dollar and then these hose clamps. The hose clamps came from Harbor Freight. I got a box of 40 hose clamps for $4 with my hose, and I put a hose clamp on either end to replace the damaged vacuum line. That's all it was. So when it first stalled out, I did check the vacuum lines, but I did a visual inspection, and that's not good enough. The hose can look totally fine and be damaged or have a leak. So I do not recommend simply doing a visual inspection. What I do recommend is using brake parts cleaner, a mass airflow cleaner, a carburetor cleaner, whatever you have. And with the motor running, you take it and you spray down all of the vacuum lines. And if you hear a surge in the idle, you know that you found your leak. So when I did this, I sprayed the EGR valve and all of the lines and I heard nothing. And I sprayed up front on the right side of the throttle body and I heard it spike a little bit. Then I came around to the left, the left side of the throttle body, I sprayed and I could really hear it surge. But I kept going, so I sprayed back here all along the vacuum lines and there was nothing. So I came back here and I'm spraying and I hear it surge, I hear it surge. So I got some light down and found that the vacuum line was damaged. So a simple repair and that solved the problem for a couple of dollars. Like I said, the point of this video 
It's just to tell you guys to check the simple stuff, check these vacuum lines and not just a visual inspection, spray them down. And if there is a leak, that'll find it. To save you a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of frustration. I'm also reading in these forums, guys just kind of say, oh yeah, I checked them. If it's just a visual inspection, that's not good enough. You don't want to spend money on an OptiSpark, on an EGR, on an IAC, on all of these things, only to not have the problem solved. And I've read that too. Guys have changed all of these parts. They didn't even fix the problem. So make sure you check these vacuum lines. And while I'm still on the topic of vacuum lines, I was checking things around the motor and on my EGR valve, which I did recently replace, the vacuum line was brittle and it completely snapped. So this is a piece of the old vacuum line and it's very brittle and it just snaps. So to fix that, all I did is take my cheap vacuum line, put hose clamps on the end and replace the section of the vacuum hose that was broken. It's actually a simple fix and I did this two ways. You can see the original vacuum line with the rubber boot and a plastic hose. Now underneath, I took my replacement vacuum line and I used the hose clamp and just you know slid it on and tightened down the clamp and I did the same up here on the front. So that's one way to do it. You just completely remove the line and replace it with the hose and clamp. So the second way I did this is with the vacuum line that's on the EGR valve and going to the intake manifold. I didn't just completely replace the old line with the hose and clamp. I'll show you what I did. Here's how I did it the, the second way. So instead of taking the hose and putting it directly on with the clamp, I kept the boot elbow and I attached my hose and clamp to that and then reinstalled that onto the car, as you can see here. So we still have the factory boot, but now we have our replacement hose and clamp. And both of these methods will work once again, the point of this video is to check your vacuum lines before you start buying parts and falling down the black hole on the forums, especially the OptiSpark black hole. Check your vacuum lines. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. God bless you all.